Hey guys, welcome back. This is Val from Jamelight. Welcome to this quick overview of my new package, Mega HDR Packs Temple of the Sun, based on Stonemason Prop with the same name. Now, this package features 120 HDR maps. There is, I'm gonna just show that real quick, 20 camera locations around this prop. Okay, it's a beautiful scenery. And the main stonemason prop is just a centerpiece and then I've extended this one with lots of additional items, nice fog and water and all that. So it's a cool set. And what you have is 20 camera angles around the set with the sun, all right? And then you have 20 camera angles also with the shaded version, which is basically the same as the sun, but also enables you to place characters or stuff when there is shadow. So I'm gonna show you that in a moment. And in addition to that, you also get 20 camera angles with the beautiful sunset version as well. Plus, you're getting two resolutions. One is 16K and one is 8K. So all in all, it's 120 HDR maps. Once you have it installed, you can find it in my dash library. Light presets, Dreamlight, iRay, Mega HDR packs, Temple of the Sun, and you have all these icons. Now, and so I have here the beautiful Gaia character with a stunning Chinese dress and as you can see the moment you load a character it kind of ends up at the center and the way I render these maps is that the camera during the rendering process is at one meter height so if you set it to one meter it's gonna match the immediate vicinity here all right now here's the thing it's a lot quicker and better to move the camera than the character so basically if I left click on this icon up here, let me just wait for the view, I can quickly move the camera back and forth. And it has the same height as I do that, right? So it's a very quick way to move the characters. It's, it's kind of instant, right? It's a no-brainer. Now, if I want to move it to the left and right, I can left click up here and move the character left and right. Now, this also moves the character up and down, will we'll kind of mess up the height of the camera. So once you're done with rough positioning, go back to the camera and make sure it's set to 100 to match perfectly. All right, so the way you change these backgrounds is that you simply choose a different angle. Let's say we choose this one over here. And voila, it's done, all right? Then you simply move here the camera to match, set the proper height to 100, and you're done. You need to be closer, then use this left click on this one, right? And all these are 360 degree, right? So you can move and shift uh, all the way you want. As long as you use height 100, you will always have a perfect match. So it's a gorgeous set with great lighting and uh, it's extended with these additional um, clones, if you will, that make the set look larger, right? So you have all that done. Now, if you need to, as you can see, this is the 8K version uh, of, this, of these uh, maps and it's kind of quick, you know, it's very quick at rendering and looks pretty high res, right? But if you need to zoom in and get more detail, it kind of becomes a little bit blurry when you use the 8K map. So in that case, you can switch to 16K. 16K is a little bit more heavy on your system. It's four times the memory of 8K. And, but as you can see, it looks more high, high definition, high resolution, and has more detail, so to speak, even on the ground here. All right, so if you need that, if you need to be close to the ground and render like that, you can use the 16K map. If you don't need that, if you're using a little bit more zoomed out images, then 8K is more than enough to handle that. Also more easy on your system. So let me show you how it works now using the shaded versions. Let's say you wanna render in the shadows, right? So let's go here and pick a different location. Let's go for this one. This is more behind the set. And it has a shaded area right there. Let's go even more behind here. Really when there is shadows. Here, right? Here suddenly the sun doesn't really fit because she's in an occluded area where there naturally should be no sun. So how do we fix that? Well, right here you've got 
the sun versions, we also have the shade versions. Click on the 8K or 16K depending on what you need and she is in the shadow. This is pretty cool because that enables you to really use all of this set, right? There is a lot of, you know, in HDR maps, there's naturally lights and shadows, and this enables you to uh, get advantage of the fact that you have some really cool areas that are occluded, and you can now render with those as well. So basically, you have the you know 20 camera locations that are with sun all right and as long as you have the camera set to 100 percent uh, sorry 100 you are good to go right i always kept the camera 100 um, above the ground cool so now if you want to take advantage of the sunset version it's down here it has some, it's the same camera angles. This one we're using here is uh, nine, right? So let's go down here, let's say, hey, we want to have sunset. So let's choose number nine, which is here, and choose the 8K version. And it's the same map, but it has gorgeous, uh, kind of dimmed lighting on the bed, and it has a really nice uh, sunset. So you can choose different versions here. And quickly make beautiful renders with a more sunset ish scene. Always remember to have height at 100 so your character looks properly scaled. Now, if you want to get closer to your character, that's where you can kind of start skipping the height in the bed. Because here you can say, hey, I want to be a little bit higher up uh, just to get a different camera angle on her, and you are fine with that. You can skip up to one half meter. And if you're zooming in, you won't really notice that, right? And especially if you use a blurry background. So if you turn on camera depth of field, let's say we do that right now, and set it to match the girl here to maybe something like that, then you can pretty much, you know, fake the height even more up to two meters and nobody will kind of see that, right? Let's say we want to bring back the lighting here. So this is number seven. And we're going to go now and locate the light. Number seven, which is over here. Number seven. And we want to include the sun. So let's do that. Click on that. Same, same map, just with the sun. Now, a professional way of using lighting is to use the harsh sunlight in a more backlighting fashion so for instance we can maybe use something like that so it just you know comes a bit from 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 behind but then we can match that with an additional light from the front and this is something you know professional photographers use all the time they use the strong sunlight from behind all right and then they match that with uh, softer lighting from the front. And the way this works, let me just adjust the camera depth of field here real quick. Camera depth of field, we got here. All right, cool. So let's say we wanna you know, add an additional here. We've got a nice view and so forth, right? But it's a little bit dark in the shadow naturally because shadows are dark all right so we want to add a spotlight and look through that spotlight view i'm going to switch over to texture shaded so it's a little bit quicker to preview or even hidden line and i want to place that right behind the camera so where you have the camera place the spotlight behind like so aim it at her a little bit higher up than the camera to provoke shadows underneath the chin and so forth right mm -hmm. and now that we have that in place simply click on the spotlight set it to rectangular shape 100 100 so it's kind of soft the larger they are the softer they come right and just add a little bit of extra frontal lighting to that was too much right quarter of that 
Cool. So that now we have a professional approach. We have the the backlight coming from behind, and we got a soft lighting coming from the front. So this is the way you can use these maps. Now, as an extra quick bonus for you, I'm gonna just show you how we can render in shadow and sun at the same time. Let's delete that. Let's pick a new map. Let's turn off the uh, depth of field effect. Let me zoom out. All right, and let's go for a new location. Let's pick a map here. By the way, all these maps go around the prop, the stone mason prop, and eventually they will, as we are progressing, they will eventually elevate a little bit and come from a little bit more from an angle or height. So here is the shaded version, cool. And then we got, so see you have a lot of cool angles here to play with. This is really cool. And then, you know, when you go up to 15 somewhere here, you start to um, have some cool angles. And then at 16, we got a little more elevation going on. So these are a little bit higher up. And you can still match them by simply having the character, the, the camera lower, right? So it's still possible to use them. But they are more to be used for like if you have airships or aerial shots or if you have angels in the sky or maybe dragons in the sky right that's where you can use these little bit more elevated uh, maps for that cool we can still use them for your characters right just make sure they are properly scaled so they don't look funky and all that and here you have an additional aerial shot even higher up this one here right i'm not gonna match the character real quick but you can pretty much you know, match the character any way you like here in these sets. Just uh, make sure you have the proper scale. You can just throw them in quickly by just moving the camera, right? So it's possible to use these sets in various ways and so forth. So, and a bit more here, elevated up in the air here as well. Stunning view. And then you've got this one here right in between. Right in the middle of the arch. It's a really cool camera. And you can always, you know, match your character here real quick. Just make sure he has the proper scale. So cool. And if you want to use your character here in the shadow, you simply use the shaded version. All right. And then move your character real quick over here. And scale accordingly. And that's that. You have your character right there. I'm going to, like I said, end this video by rendering him at number 13 here and just uh, use the proper height on my camera, which I kind of messed up during the aerial shots. There we go, and I'm gonna bring her into view. Now this is the uh, shaded version, all right? So I'm gonna put her in shade. We're right about here, all right? And just have the proper height. Now when using dual uh, renders, like I'm gonna do right now, it's very important that you keep the camera static so don't move the camera all right so once done i'm gonna render the first image just simply do a real quick default render here real quick that's about that these usually render really quickly because i mean most of the map is already pre-made right so it's it's really quick even on cpu rendering if you don't have a good graphic card it's still very quick because you are rendering uh, most of the image is already done, right? So I'm going to save this as image number one. There we go. Save. Awesome. And now I'm not going to move the camera. Very important. Do not move the camera. <laughs> That's going to ruin the, the, the entire thing, right? So I'm going to keep it static. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is move my character. So I'm going to switch over to texture shaded real quick. Just move her to the other side over here where there is sunshine. And I'm going to rotate her so she faces the other direction. And I'm going to switch back to Nvidia Preview. And I'm going to throw in I'm going to throw in the other version, which is the Sun version. Of the same set. Alright. And I'm going to render this out again as an additional image. And again, rendering is really fast. Don't need to worry about that. Just move that into place. And we are almost done. Cool, alright. 
And now I'm going to save this as image number two. All right. So let's go ahead and click here. Save. And call it image two. Great. Let me disable rendering now. Let's head into Photoshop real quick. And I'm going to simply load both images into Photoshop. Place one of them on top of the other. So using Ctrl A to select all, Ctrl C to copy, go back, Ctrl V to paste. And it's the same image, as you can see, it doesn't really, you know, the image doesn't change. But what changes is that we have one girl on the one, on, on one of them and the other one has the other girl, right? So let me just simply remove half of this dual exposures and use both of the maps at the same time. One for shaded effects and one for effects in the sun. All right. So back inside Dash Studio, I'm going to remove my character and just quickly browse through these images because there are some really stunning views here. I rendered these to enable you to render really gorgeous views. I place the camera in very specific areas. So you always have a lot of stuff to look at and make incredible renders with these, right? Really cool. By the way, as an additional function and feature, you also have here the, uh, the water. I'm gonna show you that in a second. You can also throw in props into the water. So we've got this one here. So you're getting a lot of cool camera angles, right? It truly never ends. Typical Chinese, awesome, beautiful. Lots of cool shadows and 120 maps to play with. All right, 20 camera locations, three different looks, shaded, sun, and sunset. So really cool camera angles available all, all the way and straight down or straight up also possible to render, right? Let me just go down here a few notches. Let's take this one, number eight. Really cool stuff. Uh, you got the one on this platform down here called here this one uh, number eight uh, sorry number seven is right on, the, on this platform down here and even though I switched to different platform it's still one meter above the ground this one you already seen really cool stuff then got this one shaded and by the way even even though you're using this this shaded version here, you can use the sun version and put an airship and use the sun version to light it up, right? So there is a lot of cool options you can go and, and use here. And these are some great camera angles here. So lots of cool stuff and so forth. So I don't need to wade through all these. Um, you see that there is a lot of, <laughs> a lot of cool uh, images and value here. Incredible, beautiful sunset. Uh, gorgeous colors in the background and you can just go ahead here and play as much as you want. So let me just end this video with showing how to use the water because you can use water reflections. So let me elevate the camera a little bit. Let's use a little bit higher camera for this one. All right, and the water. And let's say you wanna play something in the water. All right, so let's say we just add a primitive. Let's use add a sphere. Let's add that and let's quickly move it into the water. So the way we place something in the water is simply put, we move it below the surface. Then it's kind of in the water and we can scale it down a little bit or move the camera. You can do the same thing. You can move the camera away, right? And now that's in the water, you kind of lack reflections, all right? So what you can do is I've made an icon at the top here called water reflections on. So simply click there and you get water reflections in the water, as you can see now. So pretty much that's it, my friend. So go ahead, grab this package right now while it's on sale. You get 120 maps, 20 camera angles, two resolutions, three different modes, shaded, sun and sunset. Thanks so much for watching. Have fun with this new package and I'll see you soon again.